Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI, and this is a 47-year-old male with a history of recent injury. They didn't say how he was injured, but he has a significant uh, bony injury in the anterior humerus here. So this is the humeral head. Here's the biceps tendon. This is the subscapularis muscle, central tendon coming in here, the tendon coming in here to the lesser tuberosity. And he's got a prominent impaction injury with a depression of the cortex here. And it's right along the medial margin of the subscap. It goes all the way to the articular surface here, marrow edema. So this looks like a hill sacs impaction injury, but it's in the wrong spot. Instead of being the posterior superior, this is in the anterior aspect. So this is a reverse hill sacs impaction injury. This also happens with dislocations, but instead of an anterior dislocation, this is, of course, a posterior dislocation. This will come back over here and impact on the posterior glenoid. And they get the same exact defect, but just in reverse. A prominent hill sax impaction injury with marrow edema in the front. And now if we look towards the back, we should see the typical findings of a, a labral tear and periosteal injury. And sure enough, we do. So here is the front, middle, and back of the glenoid. And we can see the posterior glenoid rim. There's a fracture fragment. It's rounded here instead of... Uh, pointy up towards the front. It doesn't make a cup. We've lost that posterior cup, or at least the posterior rim of that cup. And there's a little fracture fragment here that would complete that. And also we can see the uh, capsule labral complex is fogged in here uh, associated with that uh, fracture. The posterior scapular periosteum is torn. It's bright, uplifted a little bit. And this is a detached capsule labral fragment here. And if we go to down, this is the inferior labrum. We can see it all the way from front to back. And so this is a reverse Bankart lesion. This is a coronal PD fat set sequence. We can look in the coronal plane. We can see the biceps tendon looking fantastic. But there's fluid in the tendon sheath and some uh, fluid extravasating downward here. So leaking fluid from the tendon sheath. This is that humeral injury in the front. And we can see that the labral tear starts here in the front. The inferior labrum is torn a tear right through the base of the labrum. This is the anterior band of the inferior glenoid humeral ligament coming over here. It attaches, and the attachment is just a little too foggy and puffy. It doesn't, uh, it's not dark and well defined, so they have a partial tear of that anterior band. And then here's the middle part. Now we're getting to the posterior band. It comes down and then back up. And right here where it attaches posteriorly, that posterior band is also partially torn. It looks a little thick at the attachment. You can see that labral tear right there. So a broad labral tear goes through the entire inferior labrum and through the entire anterior labrum with uh, an associated fracture of the posterior glenoid and an injury of the posterior scapular periosteum. So lots of lots of things, but in the end we just call this, there's a evidence of a posterior shoulder dislocation with a prominent reverse hill sacs impaction injury and a prominent fibroosseous reverse Bankart lesion. And one last thing to look for in these patients is the humerus. Is it nice sitting in normal position in the glenoid? And it's not. You can see the epicenter of the glenoid is right here. Here's the epicenter of the humerus over here. So lots of posterior subluxation. They have posterior joint instability. Humeral head is drifting backwards.